Microsoft is slowly but surely pushing Windows to the cloud, and that may just turn out to be the solution for some of the challenges the company has been recently facing. My only concern is, I'm not quite sure if that specific approach entails the bright future we've been hoping for. Before we move on, have in mind that this video can be consumed in just audio form, so if you have anything else to do, feel free to do it while listening. Also, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing and turning on bell notifications. Thanks a ton. According to a recently revealed presentation, Microsoft is aiming to increasingly move Windows 11 to the cloud by building on Windows 365 in a manner that would make it possible to stream a full operating system to any device. Now, even though this information was part of an internal document, in reality, there's really no secrecy here because if we take a closer look at what's been happening around Windows 11 over the past year or so, it becomes blatantly obvious that this plan has been in effect for quite a while now. For those of you who are not too familiar with the product, Windows 365 is a cloud-based service that allows users to access a full Windows desktop experience from virtually any device with an internet connection. This means that a user can access a personalized Windows operating system complete with all their apps, files, and settings, whether they're using a desktop PC, laptop, tablet, or even a smartphone. They don't have to worry about any potential hardware compatibility issues, because the whole thing is technically not even running on their system. It's simply being streamed. Now, Microsoft is working on a few new features that will integrate Windows 365 into Windows 11, all of which are expected to be rolled out in future updates, and some of which are already available as public previews. The first one is something they're calling Windows 365 Boot, which, as the name implies, effectively allows users to log directly into their cloud PC at startup without having to access their local installation. The second feature that is expected to be rolled out is something called Windows 365 Switch, which will basically be an addition to Task View that allows users to easily transition between their local desktops and a cloud PC. Microsoft also claims that they're working on an offline solution for Windows 365, and according to Chief Product Officer Panos Panay, all these things are just the beginning of the company's cloud integration ambitions. Now, initially, this sort of cloud-based computing was mostly aimed at businesses via remote app or web browser. However, the previously mentioned internal presentation paired with recent activities seem to suggest that the folks at Redmond are seriously invested in broadening the service. As in addition to everything said, Windows Central has even reported on internal documents that detail some of the features Microsoft has been considering for a new consumer version of Windows 365, including a family subscription that would give parents the ability to drop in on their kids' PCs to help with homework or join in playing a video game. Needless to say, these types of reports historically have been known to be wrong, and Microsoft is definitely no stranger when it comes to activities of bamboozling the public, but with this many signs on the road, I think it's not that far-fetched to say that the future of Windows seems particularly cloudy. Now, at the beginning of this video, I alluded to how these ambitions might tie to some of the issues the company has been facing, because in the world of Redmond, one could imagine at least a few burning questions looming in the air. For example, how do we get more people to use Windows 11? How do we deal with the fact that a huge chunk of the Windows 10 user base doesn't even meet the hardware requirements for Windows 11? And if that's the case with Windows 11, what can we even expect when we release the next major version of Windows? From the perspective of you and I, these are all legitimate questions. But when we approach them with the added context of everything we've been talking about so far, I can't help but feel like they sound a bit naive. Maybe the folks over at Microsoft already have things figured out, and maybe the solution for at least one of these issues, possibly even all of them, has something or even much to do with cloud computing. Now, I don't want to make any bold predictions, but I think it's definitely worth discussing some interesting possibilities. So let's start by taking a look at how Microsoft might utilize the power of the cloud in order to tackle a challenge that could likely emerge once the next major version of Windows gets released. Now, said version may or may not end up being called Windows 12, but for ease of communication, we'll just call it that. Windows 12 has reportedly been in the works for quite some time now, and when it comes to its potential nature, everything seems to be pointing in one direction. Microsoft is investing billions of dollars in AI, which they have already started incorporating into Windows 11, mainly through Bing, but also through an upcoming feature they're calling Copilot. On the other hand, the company is partnering with hardware manufacturers who seem to be laying out the groundwork for an AI-powered future. On top of that, earlier this year, Panos Panay stated that AI is going to literally reinvent how users do everything on Windows, and that the company is currently working on an OS that, quote, blurs the lines between cloud and edge. 
With all that in mind, I think it's completely reasonable to assume that Windows 12 is going to be filled to the brim with this ever-advancing technology, which on the one hand does open a door to some rather interesting new possibilities, but also may come with some challenges. You see, executing ChatGPT-esque AI capabilities on a local computer, like the one you and I use on a daily basis, will probably require dedicated hardware acceleration which will likely not come cheap. So the question that arises is, if around 50% of workstations in 2021 were not able to run Windows 11 because they didn't meet certain security requirements, what's to be expected if presumably in 2024 the next major version of Windows starts requiring AI-ready hardware? How does Microsoft ensure that they'll be able to deliver a full experience to a wider user base? Well, the answer may just be cloud computing, the likes of which is already available through services like Windows 365. Microsoft is also reportedly working on something called Core PC, which is a technology that would allow for a modular Windows distribution system where an installation would adapt to the specific hardware that it's running on. So for example, a lower end device would end up having a very basic or lightweight version of the OS, while more capable machines would get served with a more robust packet. Core PC is reported to be very similar to a previous technology called Core OS, with the main difference lying in the presumption that Core PC will also focus on maintaining support for legacy Win32 applications in cases where that might be required. But what does this all mean? Well, if the distribution of Windows 12 does turn out to be a challenge due to high hardware requirements, Microsoft could use Core PC in order to deliver different additions to various configurations, and then offer a Windows 365-like compensation for the cases that end up with a limited set of features. Now, I'm not saying that this would be the ideal scenario for end users, because cloud computing definitely does come with some caveats, which I will get to a bit later, but it certainly is a concept that perfectly fits into the idea of blurring the line between cloud and edge that Panos Panay so passionately talked about. Of course, all this pertains to potential future challenges, which may present themselves in all sorts of different forms that, at this point, we can only speculate about. The bigger issue Microsoft is facing currently is figuring out how to get Windows 11 on more devices. Now, it's important to note that the core technology we just talked about does not have the capacity to bypass hard set minimum hardware requirements, meaning that it cannot produce an installation of Windows 11 that would accommodate for something like a lack of TPM 2.0 or Secure Boot. One way Microsoft theoretically could push Windows 11 onto more devices is through a cloud-based solution via Windows 10, but then the question is, what happens when Windows 10 enters its end-of-life phase and a bunch of users are not able to physically upgrade because their PCs don't meet the minimum hardware requirements? Probably the easiest way of dealing with the looming Windows 10 issue would be to discontinue it at the same time Windows 12 gets released, and then allow for modular Windows 12 installations that would just ditch the high-end security requirements altogether where that may be necessary. But I think the more interesting idea that the people at Microsoft are currently exploring is the concept of users not even needing a conventional computer or laptop in order to run a modern version of Windows. I mean, just think about it. They're planning to create a full Windows operating system that could be streamed on any device. This is literally what they're talking about. A world in which someone who doesn't even have a PC can fire up a version of Windows on their tablet or even smartphone, mirror their screen to a monitor, and then connect a bunch of peripherals in order to interact with the whole thing the same exact way they would if they actually had a local installation on conventional hardware. And that would be an absolutely great option to have, assuming people are able to do all that even when they're offline, which brings us to the caveats of this whole future Microsoft is envisioning. So first of all, the obvious one. In order to utilize a cloud PC to its full potential, you need to have a high quality internet connection. Now Microsoft does claim to be working on a version of Windows 365 that would allow users to cache what they need for offline usage and then resync with the cloud when connectivity is restored. And sure, I totally see this as a viable option for apps like Word, Excel, Outlook, etc. But what am I supposed to do if, for example, I need to edit a video in DaVinci Resolve while I'm offline on a lower power device? Do I somehow cache the necessary computing power? While I'm at it, may as well download some additional RAM. I mean, it's absurd what I'm saying, but you get the point. Even if they do develop some sort of offline solution, an internet connection is always going to be a requirement for a full experience. The second caveat is pricing. To quote an article on LifeWire, cloud computing equals subscription service. With modern conventional versions of Windows, you can make a one-time purchase for a license that will have you set not only for the version you're currently running, but possibly for several future upgrades as well. 
Windows 365, on the other hand, is primarily available through a monthly or yearly subscription-based payment model. Now, LifeWire actually notes this as an advantage, but I really can't help but disagree. It may be an advantage for Microsoft, but what about the end users? Times are tough, and what happens if a person can't make a payment on time? Does that mean that they can't do their job anymore? I mean, I know that the whole concept of ownership when it comes to software has been drifting more and more into complete obscurity, but this, this would be the final nail in the coffin. Now sure, they could make it a one-time payment, but when you think about it really, why would they? In any case, it remains to be seen. The final caveat is privacy. And look, this is a topic that is really starting to make me feel like an old man yelling at a cloud, so I'll say just this. When Windows 10 was released, I think we all quickly realized that even a basic level of privacy within a Microsoft ecosystem had become a thing of the past. From that point on, there's only one choice, convenience or privacy. And if you want the latter, the best thing you can do is to stop using Windows altogether, as well as Google, as well as Facebook, Amazon, and so on and so forth. But if you're someone who chooses convenience, you have to know that there is no way of getting the best of both worlds certainly not with Windows. You will have no privacy, and the only thing a cloud-based PC will do to add on that is eliminate the time it takes for information to travel from your computer to a server. In spite of everything, I think that exploring ways to tackle known challenges with cloud computing is generally a good thing. I also think that cloud PCs would be a great addition to Microsoft's array of products, but only as an option. Using the cloud as the primary channel of interacting with a productivity slash gaming operating system would almost certainly prove to be much less than optimal. But let me know what you think in the comments. I know you guys have strong opinions about these kinds of things, so I'll definitely be on the lookout for your input. If you found the video interesting, consider supporting the channel by liking and subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay strong.